<clears throat> All right, uh, in the last video, we talked about bracketing methods, and uh, in particular, the bisection method and the false position method. And in this video, I would like to go ahead and code up a bisection method in MATLAB. And uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a new function. And uh, bisection method is a root finding method, so it's going to return an approximation for a root, which I'm going to call xr. That's the variable that's going to store our approximation for the root. I'm going to just call this function bisection. And this bisection function is going to take some function handle that we want to find a root for. It's going to take a lower bound and an upper bound, which I'm going to call XL for X lower and XU for X upper. And then I'm also going to pass it a stopping error, meaning some percent relative error at which I deem the approximation to the, to the root to be good enough. So if our approximation yields a error that is lower than this stopping error, then I'm going to call that approximation for the root good enough. So I'm going to let the user pass in a value for that. And I'm also going to pass in a maximum number of iterations that uh, I want the bisection method to run. So just in case it doesn't get uh, below the stopping error in a certain number of iterations, it's just going to stop. I don't want it to just run forever. So um, I'm going to just try and build this up uh, slowly so that uh, it makes sense. So if I just wanted to do one iteration of the bisection method, all I would have to do is use our midpoint formula of our domain uh, to calculate our approximation for the root. So the midpoint is x lower plus x upper divided by 2. That's the midpoint. Now, um, I'm going to put a little uh, comment in here. So uh, this function uses the bisection method to find a root of the function func inside the domain XL to X upper assuming this domain bounds a root. So one way that we test to see if that domain bounds a root is Uh, our function evaluated at xl times our function evaluated at x upper has to be less than zero. So one thing we might want to do actually is to check that condition at the very start and if that condition is not true then return an error message to the user. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say if uh, the function at XL times the function at X upper. If this product is greater, greater than or equal to zero, then I want to set, I want to display an error message to the user. Say the domain 
XL, comma, X upper does not found a root. And then I want to return. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and test this function out and see if that works. So I'm going to save it here, by section. I'm going to come down here to the command window and I'm going to try running it. So I'm going to type in by section and I need to give it a function. Oh, so let's define a function first, an easy one. So I'm going to define a function f equals at x. Let's just do x minus 1.2. So this is just a line that crosses the x-axis at x equals 1.2. Okay? So we know where the root is. So if I type in f of 1.2, it should get 0. Right? That's where our root is. All right. Now, let's call our bisection method with this function. Bisection uh, f, and let's give it a domain that bounds the root and test it first. So let's have xl equal to 1 and x upper equal to 1.5. Let's give it a stopping error of 0.1% and a maximum number of iterations of 10. Even though I haven't used those input variables in my function yet, I still need to provide them. Okay, so I hit enter and what it does is it returns an answer of 1.25. How did it get this answer? Well, it took our XL plus XU and then divided that sum by 2 to give us the midpoint in between them. And it returned that as approximation. Now what if we had returned a, what if we had used 1.3, 1.3, now we, we don't bound a root. So 1.3 to 1.5 is above the root. So the, this function evaluated at xl times the function evaluated at x upper should be greater than zero. And it does. It returns this error message says the domain does not bound a root. So, good. And we know how to do one iteration and we've set it up, set up our function such that if we don't pass in a good x lower or a good x upper, it's going to tell us that it's going to stop and tell us that there was an error. So actually, uh, we should probably put in here error like that. There we go. I like that better. All right. So what if we want to do more than one uh, iteration of bisection? If we want to repeat this process over and over again, we need to stick it inside of a loop. I'm going to use a for loop because we have a maximum number of iterations. So I'm going to say for i, i is my loop index, i equals to 1 to max iter, which is that's the maximum number of iterations we're going to tell it to run. And then I'm going to end that here. So my loop is ended and I'm going to indent this. So now what I need to do is now I can run this and see what happens. Well, so this is going to run this code in here for a number of maximum number of iterations. So if I save it and run it, let's run it with a valid uh, interval, 1 to 1.5. Well, it just still returns us the same answer, 1.25. And why does it do that? Well, we never change x lower or x upper. So this is always getting set to uh, 1 plus 1.5, which is 2.5 divided by 2 is 1.5. It just does it. Uh, this, it runs this command over and over and sets x root to 1.25 maximum number of iteration times. So what we need to do now is we need to uh, check 
Okay, once we divide the subinterval in half, once we divide our interval in half, uh, xr becomes the midpoint. Now there's two intervals, two subintervals, the interval from xl to xr and the interval from xr to xu. We need to check which subinterval the true root is in. So this step right here is the step of approximating the root with bisection. The next step we need to do is find which sub subinterval the true root is in. So we could say, uh, for example, uh, is it in XL to XR? This is one subinterval. Or is it in XR to X upper? Well, The way that we can test that is we can pick one of the intervals and we can do our test, this test that we defined up here. So we can take the function that we're trying to find the roots of and evaluate it at the endpoints of these interval and multiply them together and then see if it's less than zero. And if it is, then we'll know that that interval contains the true root and the other, other interval does not. So let's go ahead and check it for this interval, right? So we could say if the function evaluated at xl times the function evaluated at xr which that's our, this is that subinterval right there, the left hand subinterval, is less than zero. If this is true, then we know the root, the true root, true root is in this interval, xl to xr. So if that's the case, we need to change our variable that stores the upper bound, which is xu, to be equal to this xr value. So if that's true, we need to say x upper, which this variable stores our upper bound for our interval, needs to be equal to xr, get set equal to xr. Now if it's not true, then what we need to do is then we know it's not in this interval and we know it's in this interval we need to set our lower bound to be x the value of xr so now this is we know the true root is in xr to x upper this interval so we said x lower equal to xr because this should be the lower value of our interval. Now we've updated the interval and we should be able to run this uh, this function now and it should update and we should get a better value a closer value to 1.2 than we did by just doing one iteration of bisection method. So let's save it and run it. So we save it and we run it. Hey look it's it ran for uh, 10 iterations and we see that it's gotten very close to the value of 1.2. And In fact we could just say hey let's run it for a hundred iterations and we see it's already after a hundred iterations it's converged a hundred percent to the true value. So, but we don't want it to run, have to run for a hundred iterations each time. We want to give it some, you know, when, 
at what point does the the error in this approximation get below 0.1 percent? Well, that's when we really want to stop. So what we need to do now is after we calculate our approximation for the root, we need to calculate an approximation to the error. And the way that we can do that, we can just define a new val uh, a new variable, which I'm going to call error, and set that equal to the percent uh, relative approximate error, which is equal to the absolute value of the difference between the current approximation minus the previous approximation all divided by the current approximation times 100 percent. So the current approximation is this is stored in this XR variable minus the previous approximation I'm going to call that XR previous which I haven't defined anywhere yet so I'm going to have to define that up here somewhere and divided by the current approximation which is stored in XR and that take the absolute value of that and multiply it by 100 to give us a percent okay now oh, I should probably put this above our little notes here doing something funny. Uh, paste it, control Y. Oh, it's got its own interesting things here. Alright. So here, this step is calculating. Calculate the approximate error. And then after this, we want to uh, if the error is below the stopping error, stop iterating. So we need to do a check, which means we need to use an if statement. We need to compare. If our error is less than or equal to the stopping error. Remember the stopping error is passed in by the user. Then we want to just break. Break means break out of the loop. Okay. And then we put the end for the if statement. All right. Well, now we can run our function and if we do that I'm going to just save this now and run our function again I'm going to pass it a hundred iterations a stopping error of 0.1 percent this is these are my x lower x upper and there's my function Ooh, yeah I forgot to define x previous xr previous so what I need to do up here is give some initial value for the previous error. And I'm just going to set XR previous equal to X lower. The reason is, is we want our previous error to be some value inside the interval XL to XU, but we don't want it to be a value, the value of the root. So, um, Technically, any value inside the interval except for the bounds could be the root. So, um, this way, what happens is now I've set a value for x previous that is that's in the interval, but it's guaranteed not to be the value of the root. All right, if I save this and then run it, this isn't going to work, but you'll see, okay, it ran, but how many iterations did it run? 
something we need to check. So maybe something at the end we could do is we could have it print out the number of iterations that it ran. I'm going to just define a variable called iterations and set it equal to i, which will be the number of iterations that it ran. And I'm not going to put a semicolon after it so that it will uh, show me how many iterations it ran. So if I save that and then run it again, we see that iterations was equal to 100. So it ran for 100 iterations again. So it's not stopping because this is the exact value for the root. So that's zero error. Right? So that's better than 1% uh, error. So what's happening is, is this XR previous, this calculation for the error probably isn't changing, right? So if I, uh, if I actually take this semicolon off so it prints out the value of the error at each iteration and then save it, okay, and then run it again, this time I'll, let's not have it run for 100 iterations, I want to have it run for 20 iterations, okay. So it says, hey, it ran for 20 iterations, and here's the error. Look, it's the same value every single time. Is it the same value? No, it's changing a little bit, but not very much. And the problem is, is, the problem is, is we're not updating the previous error. So after we calculate XR, what we need to do is we need to, uh, after we calculate the error, then we need to update, update the previous, update XR previous. So we can say XR previous is equal to XR. So now that's going to get updated every time. So our error is changing but not very much. That's because it was staying equal to XL the whole time. Now we're updating it. So if I save that, now I should be able to run for 20 iterations and look, it only ran for nine. We can see the error here is below 1%, and that's when it stops. So now it's behaving the right way. So now I can come back in here and cover this back up, put the semicolon after it, and I have a working bisection Ooh. method. So, all right, um, oh, I will show you guys the. I will, I'm off to lunch, so I'm going to end this video, and we'll see you in the next one.